September was insane. Let's catch up. Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Tobias Mug from Lit Video Productions. We make epic videos for our epic companies. And today, I just wanna talk about the insane month of September that I had, some different things that went on, some different gear that I bought, as you can see over here, just over my left shoulder, got ourselves a little gimbal action going on, and just some things that have happened. So let's just start at the beginning of the month. I had a lighting gig that I did, did that, and then kind of disappeared into the mountains for a little weekend, four day weekend, went fishing, phone didn't work out there. It was absolutely fantastic, but then the Tuesday that I kind of got everything going again, it was just <sighs> insanity. Trying to do catch up, and it was like September was just vicious. There was like this energy. There was, there was something about September. I think it's just everybody else has gone back from vacation. They're ready to go ahead and knock out the fourth quarter. People are going back to school. Different things going on, so there's just the energies going on. So I got a gig i did a gig the that night i had to go down to dc go shoot a thing it was like a million degrees in this room shot this thing and then the next day i did a setup day and two a conference for two days shooting which was like you know 7 a.m call time so i had to leave the house at 5 a.m just to make sure i got there at 7 work all day drive back during rush hour you know not the most fun but by the time the weekend rolled around i was ready for some more rest and relaxation um i honestly don't even remember what i did that weekend I'm sure I had something I had to go and do. It just felt like this is how September's been going, just going and going and going. I had some meetings that following week. So I had my meetings set up and all of a sudden a buddy hit me up and was like, hey, um, I need someone to shoot three interviews. Are you available one uh, Friday and then also two days early next week? And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm available. What's going on? Turns out I had to go to three different states. I had to get on a plane, I had to fly to Portland, I had to fly to Salt Lake City, and I had to fly to Raleigh, North Carolina. And this all needed to be done in less than a week, in just a couple of days. Um, are you available, can you do that? It needs to be two cameras shot in 4K, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sure, let's go ahead and do that. Um, booked it, the producer took care of all the flights and that kind of stuff, hotels, car rental, anything I needed because I had very little time to pull equipment, make sure I had stuff, and to talk to producer, the editor, and everybody else just to make sure I was on board, knew where I had to be, who I was gonna be interviewing. I mean, I was getting point of contact emails like the morning of or the night before. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you because I was in so many different time zones and on different flights. My brain was absolute mush. But borrowed a, a light kit from my buddy because my lights are way too big to air transport and anytime I've done anything where I had to fly out somewhere I've always had a grip package waiting for me that wasn't an option for this I had to bring lights with me so I hit up my friend he had a three light panel panel set in a pelican case so it was flight ready um, it had two stands in there two of the um, panels were put together so it had like a nice big 2k panel source and then I had another panel so I could at least do the basic scratch light like I've got going over here and then a big key on them I couldn't do anything to my background but fine I at least could do the basics that I needed to do and most of the places I was shooting and I was either shooting outdoor on location didn't need any lights for that or I was shooting in an office and I just tried to find somewhere that was interesting where I could have something out of focus in the background Normally, they always stick you in conference rooms, which are the most boring, ugly rooms that you can find. Okay. They're the most boring, ugly rooms that you can find. So if you can, try to find somewhere more interesting, but there's normally nowhere you can shoot that's quiet. So did that. Let's just go over the schedule that I had. So I flew out Friday morning, I don't know, 5 a.m., 4 a.m. I don't even know what time I went to the airport. It was early in the morning arrived there, Ubered to the office, set up, and basically the CEO and the VP were in and out of meetings all day, so it was just, you're, you're on standby waiting for them to have an opening. It was just a crazy Friday for everybody involved. But we got, the, got our interviews, they were fantastic, they were able to come in a little earlier, so then I was able to get back to the airport, fly to JFK, and then back to BWI. So, you know, I got home around 11 or midnight that night, then the weekend was kind of spent getting ready for the following week's shoots. So I had, I was already zonked out from that day, 
but then I had to get my gear ready and everything. I repacked some stuff so the weight was a little better. And then I flew out to North Carolina that Sunday night. Crashed there for a couple hours, went to the gig early that morning, got what shots I needed, and then I had to go back to the airport, which was about an hour and a half away from where we were shooting, get back to the airport, and um, I backed up all my files, I was double redundancing everything the whole time I was shooting, just to make sure. I kept it on a memory card, but then my CFast 2.0 card, I did have to transfer stuff off of because that was my only card that I had that can shoot 4K on my XC10, which was the B camera for all my interviews. I shot everything else with the C200, so I was able to just fill up cards that way. I went to Best Buy and just bought them out on every card they had just to make sure I had enough for this trip. So, anyway, back to where I was at. So, got back on an airplane, went to Denver. Spent a couple hours in Denver and then got to Salt Lake City. I got to Salt Lake City around midnight and then I wasn't able to get my rental car till about 1 a.m. Got to the hotel maybe about 1.15, 1.30 and then left the hotel at 6 a.m. so I could go to the shoot. Just put that together. So I got maybe what, four hours of sleep, if that. You can't even sleep when you're in that kind of mode. But got a little bit of rest, went, shot with the crew. Got an interview, and then we uh, did some stuff in the field. It was it was great, actually. That shoot went really well. I was wrapped by 11 a.m. My flight didn't leave till about 5 or so that evening. And then I had to lay over in Phoenix. And then from there, I got home around 5 a.m. Now, mind you, I live on the East Coast. So Salt Lake City is two hours behind. So when I said I landed there, I got my at midnight, that's actually 2 a.m. For, for me, kind of how my body is used to. So I got my car at 3 a.m. So it's just like, just think about where my head's at. And then I got to Phoenix, and then I, that's where I got really confused because they don't do daylight saving time, so they're, we're an hour ahead, I think. I don't even know. You get to this point where I was on so many flights, and they were at such weird times. I just went with the local time. That's what time I had to board at. That's all I needed to know. Got through all of that. 5 a.m. I land, got home. My laptop went on me. Um, while I was out and about, I got the blue screen of death. Luckily, I had backed everything up up until then. So all that I had to do, I had one C, uh, all my CFast stuff was backed up. So that I had C200, double redundancy card, both recording in there. That was the final shot day, and I had to wait till I got home to do that. I fired up the tower, which has gone asleep behind me. I thought I had it, no screensaver, but apparently not. But the tower behind me fired that up and did my transfers and then I went to sleep until my phone started going off and then that's when it was like all right I got to upload all this footage to make sure that the editor can get done what they do so I went ahead it was 250 gigabytes so it pretty much took all afternoon for some reason I was at like 115 megabits of upload megabytes of upload it was really slow but it was at a point where I was like I'm just gonna it took me it took an hour per upload that I did, all these different folders. So it was just like, all right, we'll just take a nap. Just keep checking on the computer. I had the computer in my living room. I was on the couch, zonked out all day. Thursday, I had another shoot here in town, took care of that shoot. And then Friday, just kind of wrapped up some stuff for the end of the week. And Saturday, I caught a cold while I was on the road. So Saturday, I literally just slept all day. I wrapped myself up. Started sweating everything out, plenty of fluids, vitamin C, soup, all that good stuff. Still feel a little sick today, but I pretty, pretty much took care of it because now I've got to get into Monday and starting off October. Goodness, that was a crazy, crazy, crazy time. I'm very happy I did it, but now I know that if I'm going to do any future traveling, I think I'm going to get some flexible panel lights and maybe some little instruments so that I can do some stuff in a small lighting package. I'm really looking at Draycast right now. They've got those, their yoga series mat lights, which are waterproof and you can put two on one power source. It has a V-mount battery. And then also looking at, they have, Draycast has these little, um, they're not Fresnels, but they have barn doors on them and they have like, you know, they're just able to, to do either a scratch light or I can do like an up light or something like that on location. They're very small, very small power draw. So I'm thinking, that might be somewhere to go because after hugging around that huge case to six different states, as it were, I only had to lug it around to three of them. But 
I don't want to have to do that again. That was a lot of work. The backpack alone having two cameras in it and you know every single battery that you own is in your backpack because you can't put it, put it under the plane. It was just kind of one of these things where I think a smaller light kit that's flexible that can pack up, that's really where I need to go and it's going to be a good investment. At the end of the day, I need to make sure I've got some more flights booked before I go ahead and make that investment, but it's all going to happen pretty quick. I still need to have, after I buy it, a time where it needs to be shipped to me. So I got to keep that in consideration. Hopefully there won't be any last minute bookings and it'll be something where I know I have this flight planned at the end of the month and I've got a couple of weeks I can get that gear, whatever it is, all in order and and be straight and i'll probably upload while i'm on the road if i have the time rather than waiting to get home but it was just the way that this shoot was and i was in airports and all that it was just i was go 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 get the shots get the shots get the shots not sure what time zone i was in the whole time but all said and done it was an experience it was pretty fun it was kind of cool to see some other places when i say kind of it's because by the time it was wrapping around to getting home you, you're done with airports, I think, at that point. You just want to be home. You want to be comfortable and all that good stuff. You're tired of being out of the bag and just irritated and using stalls and whatever else. You know what I'm saying? So, um, But it was fantastic. It was an experience, and I did enjoy myself. So if you've done any traveling or if you've got the dry cast or what lights are you using to travel with, what gear do you travel with, I do need to still take a big case for my tripod. But other than that, you know, um, I didn't even talk about the gimbal. Oh my gosh, I, tra I talked about everything else in the travel. I didn't even talk about the gimbal. Just got a Ronin S. Ronin S, everybody. Now, I got it because I can use the C200 on it. The problem is I got the little eyepiece on the back. So now I think I'm going to be using the XC10 mostly on it. I might get another one so that I can have one for each camera and just be quick on the go as I need to. I think that's going to have to be our next video. So just talk about the gimbal and how I'm going to use the camera. So stand by next time for that. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe below. Give us a like on the video, all that good stuff that you're supposed to do. My name's Tobias Mug from Lit Video Productions. We make epic videos for epic companies. Until next time, everybody have a fantastic day and may your week be epic. All right, cheers, peace.